Welcome once again to In The Workshop. This is a hydraulic pressure test of a model locomotive boiler. And this is my model locomotive boiler which is fitted to my 7.25 inch gauge Titch locomotive that I built in 1996. And this is a test rig that I made. I test model boilers frequently, but I don't often video the process, but in this case because it's a locomotive, I thought it would be a good idea to make a video about it. It's simple, easy to use and doesn't have too many working parts, very much like a girlfriend I used to know. This pressure test rig that you're looking at was tested at the steam workshop last year and if I remember rightly from the test it's about 6 psi out at 180 pounds per square inch. So really when you see 180 pounds per square inch it is really 186 pounds per square inch. Very slowly and very steadily I'm pumping up the pressure and it's not holding. The pressure gauge needle is slowly moving down the scale. Somewhere there is a leak. The best way to test boilers is to cap off every orifice. Put a blanking plug in every bush. I've removed the small pressure gauge from the boiler because that only reads up to 100 pounds per square inch. When this boiler is in steam and it's been in steam many times, its working pressure is 90 pounds per square inch. So I'm going to test this to 180 pounds per square inch. Here you can see the pipe connecting it all together. And as you can clearly see from the gauge, when I get up to 180 pounds per square inch and let go of the handle, then the pressure drops slightly. It's a small tender hand pump that I use for this, and over the years it may be a bit leaky now. The first thing to do with my small torch, you can't see it very well but I can, is to look in the fire hole door. Finding a water leak in the firebox is serious, but luckily this one is bone dry. As the pressure was ramped up to 180 psi, the water gauge gland started leaking, so this was an easy fix, I tightened the nuts. For the purposes of the video, I pumped the boiler up to 190 pounds per square inch or 196 pounds per square inch because as I've just mentioned, when the gauge was calibrated, I found out it was 6 pounds per square inch out. This clip shows the view from the inside of the smoke box and as you can see, everything in here is very dry. No water at all, not even a drop. This has always been a good boiler. It was built for me by a friend of mine, a professional model engineer, and his name is Randy Blackburn. A model engineer extraordinaire, some of the things he used to make amazed me. He also built me a boiler for a Highlander which is a 7.25 inch gauge Black 5 and a Sweet William. And believe me, both of those boilers were incredibly heavy. The water gauge has stopped leaking, so I went in the house and made a cup of tea and about 15 minutes later I came back and dropped the pressure. I dropped the pressure just by opening one of the steam valves. This one in fact. Why not pump up the boiler to 180 pounds per square inch using compressed air? That would be simpler. The answer is that the water that's currently running out of the injected overflow as I open the valve doesn't compress like air. So if the boiler was to fail this pressure test, all I would hear is a click followed by a lot of water running everywhere. If it was full of compressed air, it would probably go bang. So that is why we perform hydraulic tests on boilers. It's a health and safety thing also known as common sense. To be honest, I've never cleaned this engine very much. It sits in the engine shed outside, and these days I don't get much time to steam it anyway. Now is a good time to give it a bit of a clean up. Just look at the mixture of ash and steam oil on the smoke box door. It really is quite thick. A quick wipe round with a cloth won't do any harm, and this is a flue brush. You can get different types of flue brushes. You can get brass ones and standard, I don't know what they're made out of, some sort of plastic material. I tend to use the plastic material because I find it's less abrasive and less likely to damage the tubes. Locomotive efficiency drops if the tubes get full of soot. Don't forget a boiler is just a heat exchanger, so the cleaner the metal, the more heat is going to be exchanged. There are several tubes to clean, including two superheater flues. And this brush doesn't really go down the superheater flues, I need to use a thinner one. Mainly because the superheater flues are both full of the superheater elements. And the products of combustion can get down the side of the superheater, so the superheater works. This is not a radiant superheater, it does not go right back into the firebox. Cleaning off the filth from the smoke box door is surprisingly satisfying, I don't really know why. And it's not messy because the vacuum cleaner takes care of it. This crossbar is removable and when it's back in position it allows the smoke box dart to fit through it 
You then rotate the smoke box dart 90 degrees, then tighten up the assembly with the outer lever. And what this does is gives you an airtight seal between the smoke box door and the smoke box. Because that's how steam locomotives work. You need to have a vacuum in the smoke box, so as the exhaust steam blasts up the blast pipe and up the chimney, it draws the fire. If the smoke box door was leaking, then it wouldn't work. I'm pleased to say that the boiler test was successful. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.